is Peter Falk, and I'm the new family and community coordinator here at the Peoria Riverfront Museum. First, I want to start by saying thank you to our members and our Visionary Society members for everything that they do. Next, I want to thank the National Center for Agricultural Utilization Research, and we're going to have some speakers from there today, as well as thank Ken Johnson, the curatorial intern from the University of Chicago, who helped make all of this possible. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to introduce our museum president and CEO, John Morris. Thank you. Thank you, Pierre. And thanks to everybody who's joining us live uh, via technology. Uh, come a little bit closer in over here so we've got the family together. This is a big day, and on behalf of the board of directors, we'll just fill in here. So, uh, on behalf of the board of directors of the Peoria Riverfront Museum and all the staff here, we celebrate and will continue to celebrate a major landmark breakthrough in scientific research that saved so many lives uh, around the world in the mass production of penicillin. And here at the Peoria Riverfront Museum, objects tell stories. We're gonna hear a little bit more uh, later from our curator of science, uh, Renee Kerrigan, about what those objects are. We are joined uh, by se uh, State Senator Dave Kaler, who's such a great friend of this museum and our community. We'll hear from him. We're also joined by Dr. Todd Ward of the National Center for Agriculture Utilization Research. Said that three times fast. <laughs> Nakura, uh, who will say a few words too, because this discovery of the mass production of penicillin was made here in Peoria, a, an international chemical landmark. And I'm old enough to have actually been there 20 years ago when it was, when it was named an international chemical landmark. Uh, this is a big deal for the Peoria Riverfront Museum to have opened up this extraordinary case. And maybe as Renee is describing it, we'll be able to bring the camera in a little closer so you're able to see what we have. But for all of our special guests and our staff who are here, let me first turn it over uh, to somebody who can talk about what's just happened officially and legislatively in the state of Illinois, because we now have a state microbe. So somebody who can speak on behalf of uh, We the People, uh, State Senator Dave Kaler, thank you for being here. John, thank you. It's always, always a pleasure to be here at the uh, wonderful Riverfront Museum. And uh, this is a, a special kind of display that really makes Peoria stand out in terms of the world of medicine and science. Um, the state this year did make uh, the penicillin Rubens strain. Is that right? So if you check my references, so we had some dis <laughs> disputes about what the real strain was. The, the penicillium Rubens strain as the official state microbe, and that's because uh, even though penicillin was discovered in England by uh, Dr. Fleming, it really wasn't uh, produced until the Peoria uh, folks got a hold of it and made it uh, available to mass produce. Uh, the, the, and I, I won't talk to science because I, I don't understand all that. But uh, it, it's it's unique because uh, the one thing I have learned is that uh, uh, penicillin has saved really millions of lives in, in, since it's been, been developed. I, I'll tell you, and some of us were, were in, uh, uh, up in the northern part of Illinois uh, earlier this year when uh, Governor Pritzker actually signed the legislation that made it the official state micro. Uh, and I was, I was uh, very pleasantly surprised the governor rattled off the history of it. So yes. uh, it, it, this is doing what we wanted it to do. It's, it's uh, helping to educate people as to why this is so important and what Peoria's role was in it. Uh, I, I took great uh, pride and pleasure in presenting this on the floor of the Senate because uh, I talked about that this is uh, the discovery that Peoria made, that people in Peoria made, that really changed the world. And that uh, if you look at, uh, at the kind of deaths that people were dying back in, in World War I, and how we prevented that because of, of the advent of penicillin in World War II. It's, it's just amazing. So, uh, John, I'll turn it back over to you. Thank you, all the museum folks, for making this display uh, possible. And thanks to the, I, I know there's a longer name, thanks to the Ag Lab folks <laughs> for, for your involvement in this as well. So, John. Thank you, Senator Taylor. Really wonderful. We, uh, we, I'm very proud of our team here at the Peoria Museum. Our, our staff team, our colleagues. Um, 
Today is Emily Davis's birthday. One of our colleagues today. It's a big day. It's celebrating right. the astronauts of Venezuela. So happy birthday, Emily Davis. Barb, uh, Barb Dawson, our director of education, gave me to set all this up. Pierre, thanks for your uh, introduction. Uh, Bill Conger, our lead curator, and the curatorial team, and of course Renee Carey, our our curator of science. Uh, we're joined by friends from the Peoria Historical Society as well. Um, the, there have been countless people who have tried to. Let me just make a comparison. It would be as if the uh, pivotal battle of the Civil War uh, at Gettysburg had happened in our town, but we never talked about it or did anything with it. Okay? That's what this is to science. This is the mass production of penicillin that resulted in the saving of, and we'll hear more about the, the, uh, the data today, this is a huge scientific achievement that happened in our own ag lab with our own ingenuity in Peoria, and particularly in this day and age where uh, it, the quick response to medical pandemic style emergencies, rewind the clock to World War II, where human beings were the critical tool to the success of the uh, pres preservation of our democracy, particularly in the European front, we're losing thousands of people, more to, more to death by infection than uh, by military uh, action. And so this became a critical success factor to the preservation of our democratic republic. So this is not only about uh, the science of preserving health and human life, it was also had sort of a geopolitical consequence to it as well. A lot of people don't talk about that or think about that in terms of what it is that Peoria contributed. So, in our humble little way, and we've, we've featured this in several ways before, but now we will have this case up for quite some time uh, that, that is really uh, going to help inform, I think, the public uh, as they come through to see T-Rex and go to the planetarium and see the Railroaders Exhibition Rail in a couple of weeks. So with that, let me turn it over to somebody who knows science as well as any of us, has a passion for it, uh, and that is Renee Kerrigan, our respected, nationally respected curator of science and the planetary director, to tell us more about penicillin and what we're seeing today. Renee Kerrigan. Thank you, John, and thank you all who are watching today. And really, I have to give credit again to Ken Johnson, our intern, our intern from the University of Chicago, who created this case. Um, but I do love to talk about Peoria's role in the penicillin story because without Peoria, it's true that the mass production of penicillin wouldn't have happened. So if you're able to come to the museum and see this case, which I hope you are, uh, we have some wonderful items on display here, many uh, on loan from the National Center for Agricultural Utilization Research, or more fondly known as the Ag Lab. You'll see some penicillin strains. It was the actual uh, strain of penicillin that uh, has been, been recreated by the Ag Lab and um, preserved for us. So these are items in our collection and this is the actual strain of penicillin that was discovered here in Peoria because the strain of penicillin that was uh, discovered by Alexander Fleming was a pretty weak strain. And um, the scientists at our Ag Lab here in Peoria, they, analyzed hundreds of different strains and took meticulous notes, which you can see in one of the notebooks on display here. Um, Dr. Andrew Moyer, who led many of the efforts uh, on, around the research on penicillin, his name is well known, but a little bit less well known of a name is Dorothy Fennell, who was instrumental in her research in sorting the different strains of penicillin and identifying them. It was a, a strain on a moldy cantaloupe that was found here in Peoria um, that was able to be reproduced um, while it was submerged in a vat, which was what was missing with the original weak strain that was discovered. So that mass production element was so important. Uh, so those are some of the, the items that you can see on display here, and I hope you'll come by and see it and learn a little bit more of the penicillin story. Um, but I'd like to introduce now Dr. Todd Ward of the National Center for Agricultural Utilization Research to tell us more about this and maybe more about what the Ag Lab is still doing today. 
Hello, it's uh, my pleasure and my honor to be here uh, to represent the Ag Lab. Um, I'm the top board, I'm the director there. And uh, really all I want to say is uh, I really appreciate this opportunity that the museum is taking to honor the history of science and innovation uh, at the lab. And, and this was a community effort that led to the uh, discovery of this mass production strain. And so really it was a, something that all of Peoria participate, uh, participated in and deserves credit for. I'd also like to acknowledge and thank uh, Dr. Neil Price and uh, Mr. Gary Kuzniar uh, for coming up with the idea of recognizing uh, this discovery, this scientific uh, innovation in this way via the, the State Micro Project. And with that, I'll turn it over to, to Dr. Neil Price to say a little bit more. Thank you. Um, penicillin. So uh, tomorrow, September the 28th, uh, is actually the 93rd anniversary of the discovery of penicillin. Not an extraordinary date. So on that date, penicillin was discovered by Alexander Fleming in London. And uh, the problem was his penicillin strain really was not very suitable for production of penicillin. There were problems with the strain, but they needed new strains. Fleming's strain was brought here to the USDA lab in Peoria uh, by Howard Florey in 1939, so that's the year that World War II broke out in Europe. And uh, they began to search for better producing strains of penicillin. They tested thousands of strains, literally thousands. We have thousands of strains in the, in the lab over in, in um, on North uh, University. And they found a strain, uh, Penicillium Rubens 1951, NRRL 1951, was discovered here on a moldy cantaloupe melon, as we've heard already. So that strain um, began the production of penicillin in, uh, at the USDA lab at Royal North University. And for that work, we were awarded in 1945 this award. So the group of people working on that, there were 50 researchers or so working on that project at the time. This is a Lasker Award. It's often referred to as the American Nobel Prize. And this is the very, very first one from 1945. It was awarded to the lab, the USDA lab in Peoria, for the development of penicillin. So we can be very proud of this. Peoria should be proud of this. The USDA should be proud of this. The United States should be proud of this. So since then, penicillin has saved between 80 and 200 million lives. 80 and 200 million lives. This is extraordinary. It's extended the life expectancy of people in the US. This is in the United States by five years due to the discovery of penicillin and the development of penicillin. This is the key thing here, the development of penicillin. Pure should be proud of this. And the Riverfront Museum is opening a wonderful new exhibition on penicillin to celebrate this fact. And I, I would strongly recommend that you come to see it. It's a really important, um, a wonderful event. The NRRL 1951 penicillin mold strain was passed into law at the Illinois State Senate in August 2021. And Peoria should it, and is now honored as the birthplace of penicillin production. And this is something we can be very proud of. I really think we should. Thank you very much. And to Gary, you want to say something too, Gary. This, this man has spent a long time working hard on this, uh, this effort. So up, up to you, but there's nobody who's worn the t-shirt more <laughs> for, the, for penicillin becoming our state micro. So please. OK, I might add there's another important date uh, besides uh, tomorrow. Uh, a couple of months ago on July the 14th, uh, two scientists, uh, uh, Howard Florey and Norman Heatley, came in on a train to this train station down here, just below the museum, uh, 80 years ago. So that's another date we should look at. Uh, I was given these copies of the state micro bill to hand to certain people. Uh, I'd like to present one to you. Oh my gosh, thank you, Gary. Thank you. And on behalf of Bill Conger, our curatorial staff, Renee Kerrigan, proudly accept this uh, 
copy of the state's official microbe designation. So thank you for this very much. Senator Kaler, I'd like to give one to you also. Yeah, thank you so much uh, for your work in helping us uh, get the... Uh, Absolutely, the it was a pleasure. And uh, can I have a Peoria historical Marie Notton here? <laughs> I'd like to give you a copy of it also. Thank you very much. This, this is good, good for free parking at the museum. Thank you very much, Carrie. And thanks to everybody today, Pierre. Thanks for the introduction, the education team for putting all this together, the curatorial work. We're joined by Sally Snyder, uh, a director emeritus, recently named our first director emerita in the history of the museum. Uh, and Sally's with us today uh, as we celebrate. And let's, let's, let's agree to keep celebrating this. This is something that really puts Peoria on the science and uh, research and discovery map worldwide. And we're very, very proud to have this as yet one more way in the Peoria Riverfront Museum is trying to help lift up our community. Senator Kaler, thanks for joining us. Thank you to everyone for coming today, those online joining us, and uh, let's hear it for penicillin. All right.